everyone. Thank you so much for joining um, this presentation this morning. Most of you guys have been glued to the screens as well. And so that you are here means a lot. It's, um, let's rock it out together, right? So I heard Anka saying um, before, we need to be confident um, losing and comfortable losing. And to be honest, you know, really check in with yourself. How comfortable do you feel losing? Like, I still, you know, I've been trading for close to 20 years and I still hate losing. <laughs> so trading psychology is all about helping you to um, feel the pain and feel the fear and feel everything that's going on because we are humans and then do what needs to be done anyway. And this is what we really mean with feeling comfortable losing. It doesn't mean that you like it. It doesn't mean that you love it. It doesn't mean that you, um, that you pep yourself up and say, yes, I'm closer to my win. No, it means feeling the pain and doing it anyway. And this is also what we call grit, right? And so today I want to teach you um, a few strategies on how to actually do that, how to feel the pain and do what needs to be done. And so, you know, to really master your emotions. Now, before we get there, I'd love to share with you a story, um, actually a tale of two traders that I've been working with um, over the weekend. Actually, I only worked with one trader. The other one I decided not to work with. So um, this guy I have been working with for quite a few months. And um, he, this trader has been trading for about five years. And he's a really good trader. Now, at the beginning of the week, Oh my God, it was last week. It seems like the market has been coming down for a month, but it's only been a week, guys. <laughs> so at the beginning of um, last week, when the market started to turn, he still followed his strategy and he lost a big chunk of money Monday and Tuesday. And as he worked through the steps, it turned out that he didn't really understand what volatility means because no one who has been trading um, after, I would say, 2008, really has experienced volatility. And the guys like us, like Anka and I, who have been trading in 2008 already, and you know the guys who have been through 1987, we recognized the market, and that's how we could really capitalize on it. So it's all experience, right? So what happened is, if you look at the one-minute candles from two or three weeks ago, there would be maybe 20, 30 points. But now a one minute candle can be like one to 200 points. <laughs> it's been crazy today. And so if, you, if you're not trained to understand your money and risk management and how it has to be adjusted to this kind of volatility, then it can really rip a big um, loss uh, hole into your account. And this is what happened um, with, with this trader. And so as we worked through it and we realized he needs to work on his risk management, um, he adjusted it, he went back to his mentor to to work on it and and he's had a phenomenal day today i mean just it shows that it doesn't matter if we lose money we can always make it back and so in this case in his case it wasn't it wasn't so much that he was undisciplined it was simply there were things that he didn't know he didn't know and now he knows and that's a big called experience so he has learned from his mistakes and i know he has what it takes um, to have a really bright future and then there was another trader who his mentor actually um, <laughs> contacted me and asked him asked me if I can help him. So what happened was this guy was short the ES on Friday up to Friday the 21st of February. So he was already in a loss, and he decided to close out, which was a smart move, right? Because we don't never know what happens over the weekend, and um, close out at a slight loss. It wasn't a big loss, like a thousand dollars or something. And so, of course, Monday came, there was this massive gap down. And if he hadn't closed this trade, he could have made close to $50,000 um, profits. And he was hurting. So he's trying to make up for missing out. And all week, he was driven by his emotions of FOMO, so the fear of missing out, and the FROMO, uh, which is actually um, uh, something, a term that has been coined by Michael Martin, <laughs> fear frustration of missing out. Um, so he was driven by that and his emotional brain was working in overdrive while his logical brain was completely closed down. So if he would have taken an MRI scan of his brains, the emotional brain, the amygdala would have been fired up, you know, neurons firing there everywhere like a Christmas tree. 
in the prefrontal cortex, the logical, the thinking brain, completely dark, no neurons firing there. So what happened then was last Friday, he saw a bullish reversal candle on the daily and he told himself, this is a monster reversal candle. I will give this a shot. I'm not going to miss out again. And so he went long, quite a big position. And we all know what happened uh, Monday morning. We had this massive, uh, ma our Monday, your Sunday, we had this massive gap down and on the Dow it was 700 points. So I don't know the handles on the ES. I, I don't trade ES much. I trade the Dow more. So um, this trader is now buried in a valley of tears because he, he, he bombed his account and actually owes um, the broker money now. So this is what happens, what FOMO can do to you if you don't learn to take care and to master your emotions. Now, when we look at this picture here that um, you hopefully see on my screen as I'm sharing my screen, that is actually Linda Rushke's trading room in Chicago. And you can see on the left-hand side, there is a black dog and on the right-hand side is a little um, black and white dog. That's Domino and on the left-hand side is Zoe. Um, Zoe is a Hungarian pulley and she has been trained. She has been to puppy school. She listens, she can do tricks, she is perfectly obedient. Whereas the little Domino, the little naughty one on the right hand side, he has not been to puppy school. He's a rescue dog, he has abandonment issues, um, he is going completely crazy, sometimes just running around in circles. So he um, is actually dangerous because you can't let him off the leash. He would easily run across the street and, and cause a car accident. Whereas Zoe, she stays by your side. She is very, very obedient. Now, imagine your mind to be the same. If you train your mind and take it to puppy school, then your mind can be like Zoe. So it becomes your greatest, um, um, your greatest ally. Whereas if your mind is untrained, it can be like little domino and really being dangerous to your trading, not just your trading, to your life. I have seen traders really devastating their lives by um, having massive, like million dollar losses, simply because they didn't get out of a losing position and simply because they added to losing positions, which you call uh, martingaling. Now, if we look at the most common mistakes that traders make, they are all, even though it's behavioral patterns, so it's actions that people take or actions that traders don't take, it is still emotional trading because the actions that they take or don't take are driven by their emotions. So if you enter a trade too early, then it's impulsive behavior. It's because this energy builds up in your body and the fear of missing out starts to take over and you can't be with that energy anymore. You can't be with that emotion anymore. And so you press that mouse button to release that emotion. And in that moment, you feel better. But then as soon as the market um, goes against your position, then of course, the vicious circle begins. And there's really nothing wrong with impulsive trading behavior if you close the position out immediately. But traders don't do that. So um, as soon as the trigger happened and that be emotional behavior uh, got triggered and the action got triggered as a result, then more emotions get triggered and more emotions get triggered. And so this is the vicious circle to spiral down into the abyss, into the valley of tears. Now, entering too late when traders hesitate, they are driven by fear, right? Um, exiting too early, so micromanaging. I have quite a few traders who tend to micromanage a lot. And so that, um, I'm, I'm working with and help them to overcome this behavior because again, that is driven by fear. I have a profit and I don't want to give it back. And so the thinking behind that behavior is driven by an emotion. And so because the emotion is so strong, they can't think, um, um, they can't, can't think strategically anymore. And so even though if you give them the best trading strategy, if they are not, mastering their emotional mind, then they will not be able to follow that strategy. Um, exiting too late until the account is blown, um, driven by hoping, um, and so on, right? You, um, 
I'm pretty sure all of you have been through those experiences, letting uh, trade setups go because you're overthinking. There's a really good exercise that um, one of my students shared with me. I think it was Mark Douglas who came up with it. So go back throughout the trading day and look at how many trade setups you had. And let's say there's 10 trade setups, but you only took four. Oh, only, yeah, I don't want to say only um, because I'm judging in that moment. So, but you took four. That means have a 40% take up. And now you can practice to have increased that. So next time to work on taking one more and taking one more and taking one more until you have 100% um, um, take up. Also at the same time, what you want to do is you want to look at what stopped you from taking that setup. Maybe there wasn't enough information for you to be um, convinced. Maybe um, it was purely emotional because you have already been trading so much and now you ran out of your emotional capital. So whatever it is. Um, what I found happened, oops, happened a lot in especially this market. And this is what happened to quite a lot of traders Monday last week, Monday, Tuesday last week, when the market started to turn. Even though the market was impulsively going down, it started looking for new bullish trade setups rather than identifying that these little um, plateaus are continuation patterns. And I wish I had a chart now, um, but yeah, I, I don't. Bummer. But um, look at those areas where there was a little plateau where most traders would have thought, oh, maybe there's a little double bottom happening. And then they would have gone long, but the market just rolled over and it turned out um, afterwards that it was just a continuation triangle. Yeah, so that happens a lot. And again, this morning, I got a few emails from traders and messages on Twitter uh, where traders said, oh, man, I started going short too early. In that rip up, any plateau is not a reversal pattern. It is a, um, it is a continuation pattern, right? Um, so I have a question here. Actually, I love if you guys ask me questions because, to be honest, I... Um, that's how you bring out the best in me and I can bring out the best in you because when you just sit back and listen, it goes in one year, out the other year, you have some great insights and understandings. But in order to really have tremendous change and transformation, if you participate and ask questions, that would be awesome. I'm happy to let go of this presentation because I know um, I, can, I can deliver anything that you ask me. So. Uh, you mentioned Martin Gale, negative progressive betting. Um, do you play blackjack or poker or work with card players? Um, thanks, bet scientist. Um, I um, do not play blackjack or poker myself. Um, I do have traders who are professional blackjack players and poker players. I love working with them because the way they think is just tremendous. Um, the difference in blackjack poker and so on is there is a moment of choice. So, for example, the poker game happens. And then before the next poker game happens, the cards are getting reshuffled and a new game starts. So there is a moment where the poker player can kind of um, um, collect their thoughts and, and, and just you know, get back into focus. In trading, we don't have that. The market just keeps going and going and going. Also, when we look at the market, like what happened today, if one trader was short and then the market keeps ripping up, we don't have that in blackjack and poker either because it's this game and that's how much you lose as far as I understand. Whereas in trading, you know, the loss can be um, unlimited. I mean, again, we saw it this morning, right? A thousand point reversal. If you stay in the trade for a thousand points, that can't happen in, in these disciplines. I hope I answered your question. If not, please let me know, okay? So please, guys, ask questions as much as you want to. So um, when we look at reversals in trending markets, or when we look at human behavior and human uh, behavioral patterns and personality traits, there's often humans who have um, a preferred way of interacting with the world. And one is called a mismatcher. The mismatcher is one that always feels they have to say the opposite. Um, I used to be a mismatcher. I used to be in, <laughs> really annoying, you know. Someone would say the sky is blue and I would have the 
the need to say, no, it's not. Look, there's a cloud in the sky. And it's completely irrelevant. That's, you know, had something to do with how I was um, programmed as a child and conditioned and so on. It doesn't matter, right? So once I identified this behavior, actually someone pointed it out to me, which was really, uh, I was very grateful that he did. I could change that. But it was so much in my unconscious that it was hard for me to understand, sorry, to accept feedback and to accept um, 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 ideas on how to improve. And that's like a long time ago, you know, like 20 years ago when I started out on that journey. So understanding that I was a mis mismatcher had, oh my God, changed my life because then I could interact with the world differently. And when we are mismatchers, naturally, so I still am a mismatcher. I love being a mismatcher that makes me want to conquer the world and has given me great adventure in my life. Um, but it doesn't work in a trending market. So a mismatcher loves trading reversal patterns. And knowing that you love trading reversal patterns, again, that works in a volatile market like we had today, um, or you know, the last week, um, but it doesn't work in a trending market. So you need to practice trade, um, identifying setups that are continuation patterns. It's just practicing your mind, practicing your eye, and, and, and just do it until you learn. It's kind of like someone who's right-handed has to learn to brush their teeth with the left hand. Eventually they will be able to do it. And so the same for people who are naturally followers. They would be great continuation patterns traders. Um, um, they love trading impulse. They would have done really well today. Um, and um, they don't do so well when the market is really volatile, up, down, up, down. Um, because they they are not as quick in 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 responding to the market. Yeah, there's lots more to it, but just to give you a little bit of an overview already, some understanding of why you might be at the mercy of your emotions. Now, if we look at those emotional traps, then following on from this emotional trading behavior, because the behavior, guys, is not the problem. If you um, if you close out your losing trades as quick as possible. I guarantee you, even if you don't trade perfectly, if you make lots of mistakes, you will be able to perform like a world champion. And look at Linda, for example. If you have read Linda's book, um, Trading Sardines, you see how many mistakes she made. But Linda has an extremely high level of self-awareness, what her strengths are and what her weaknesses are. And she, um, she, she makes sure that she has someone or something that is complementary to her weaknesses, so she can play at her strengths. Meaning, um, she is not very detail oriented. She knows that she makes easy mistakes in entering trades. Um, wrong trade size, wrong stock, you know, you name it, she's done it. So she has the amazing Kyle, who is her assistant. He's, he's just the most amazing person. And um, so she works in a team with Kyle. So Kyle does the things, um, he's really good at the detail, something that Linda is not so good at. Yeah, so the making the mistakes is not the problem. It's how you deal with it and the consequent behavior that is triggered. So if someone, I was working with a trader who um, micro, who tends to micromanage his trades, meaning he has a defined trading plan. He works with a mentor as well. But he gets into the trade, he gets into profit, and then he gets out too early. He doesn't let it run to the profit target. And um, the same with his losses. He doesn't let it run to the loss target. And so often he takes a loss, but it would actually turn around and go back into profit. And what he would do is he would berate himself and be so angry and, you know, sent me an email saying, oh, I'm fucked up again. And that is an emotional trap that keeps you actually stuck in it. So if we look at psychology, there's this concept of there's a trigger, there's a behavior, and what is the, what is the consequent behavioral, um, pet, sorry, what is the subsequent behavioral pattern followed after the, the mistake that we make? So if you're someone who um, berates yourself, you keep reinforcing that behavior, you are starting to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Because if you tell a little child not to play with the scissors, it's like, okay, right, but I'm not sure what to do else, what else to do, so I'll keep playing with the scissors. 
And um, if you say to the child, don't play with the scissors, play with the teddy bear, the child's like, okay, plays with the teddy bear. And so it's the same with your mind. If you keep berating yourself for all the mistakes that you make, the mind still does not know what to latch on to to do something differently. And so as you all know, I have been there, Anka has been there, we all have been there. So um, as you know, when we berate ourselves after having made a stupid mistake, then we wallow in those emotions and then we miss out on the opportunities that could have made up for that loss. Yeah, so it's really important that you start saying, all right, I got out of this trade far too late, but hey, it doesn't matter. I, 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 I still got out. Yay me. I didn't let my account um, go into um, the abyss, right? So start looking for little things that you did well whilst working on the mistakes that you made. What was it that I was missing? Do I need to refine my strategy? And so on. So what also traders do is instead of exploring the emotional world, um, what, what caused that behavioral pattern of missing out, of micromanaging, of letting the loss run, etc., they're trying to make themselves feel better with distractions, eating, going on Twitter, um, chatting in the chat room, um, um, complaining to the world what losers they are, anything, you know, whinging, complaining to the trading body, and then making them feel bad. So I always say what you're doing right now is you're, you're spilling your poison. And when you spill your poison, you affect other traders as well. So that is not very, um, very nice of you, and that is not very constructive for you either. So you need to change that. Keep the drama on the inside and deal with your shit, all <laughs> right? Um, so what I also see traders do is instead of taking a loss, or instead of doing what needs to be done, pressing that mouse button, they read the next trading psychology book to avoid taking that responsibility. So let's say you're in a losing trade, you know you need to press that mouse button to get out, you can't do it. You start going on Google, how to close out a losing trade, how to be disciplined. So that's also a, um, an avoidance pattern in trading. Linda's book was amazing. Yes, it was, Amity. Do you think neuro is important for trading more than hypnosis? Um, what do you mean with neuro, Amity? Um, to give you an initial answer, nothing is ever um, one more important than the other. I believe um, it's like saying, are your legs more important than your arms? Everything works in its own context. I don't believe hypnosis on its own works. However, hypnosis in, con in combination with um, transformational coaching is fantastic. Um, I myself work with a kinesiologist who is just amazingly blowing my mind. I just worked with her, started working with her um, beginning, uh, end of last year, uh, middle of last year, actually. Anybody who has been following me for a while knows that I have been having a lot of the back pain problems for many years and everybody just worked on my back. It's kind of like trading, right? They say, can you help me be confident? Well, that's not the problem. The problem is somewhere over there, not in the confidence area. Um, it's actually transformational coaching, not confirmation coaching. Sorry, my accent. Transformational coaching. Um, and so um, what this kinesiologist did with me, some, I don't know, woo-woo stuff. I have no idea what she did. I went home. I was so exhausted. I had to sleep. I turn around in my sleep and my hip um, goes back into space, uh, into place. So it wasn't my lower back that was the problem. My hip was out. Um, out. And I know in 2012, I fell heavily and, um, and broke my foot. And that is when it must have happened. So you can imagine I was running around seven years with a hip out of place, thinking it's my lower back. So that's the same with trading. When you think your problem is your discipline, lack of discipline, that's probably it's not. It's like thinking your problem was, my problem was the lower back. The problem is somewhere else. Yeah, so I always believe in, in many, many modalities because there's so many different dimensions to our thinking, to our behavior, to our personality that we can, um, use different um, different um, applications for different situations, okay? 
So when we look at emotional mastery, there's actually four dimensions. Emotional intelligence, emotional resilience, health and fitness. This is what most traders don't consider. They think our oh, emotional mastery is simply learning how to press that mouse button when I don't feel like it. But there's so much more to it. So emotional intelligence and emotional resilience is working on um, um, changing behaviors, um, becoming um, emotionally stronger, releasing your emotional blockages, whereas health and fitness is um, building on that and maintaining it. Right? So um, imagine you had an injury and then you need to go to rehab. Yeah? So that's emotional intelligence and building emotional resilience. You build your muscles, you build your flexibility and so on. Emotional health and fitness is then maintaining that. So emotional intelligence means developing emotional awareness understanding your emotional makeup, so what are your triggers, because it will be different for everyone else, and then learning how to deal with self-sabotaging moments in emotions in the heat of the moment. So as an example, um, when you have the behavioral pattern of going short at the bottom and going long at the top, that is most probably not your strategy, that is most probably your fear of missing out. And so if you know that this is the case for you, then you can start looking at or you know, identifying what is the emotion preceding that behavior. And as you become more aware, you will realize, oh, there's this feeling creeping up of, oh my God, I don't want to miss out now. Yeah. Um, that would be emotional intelligence, really understanding how your emotions trigger your behavior. And then also there's emotions that work um, destructively in your trading, there's emotions that work constructively in your trading. And how can you move from, we call that below the line and above the line, from below the line emotions like fear, um, lack of confidence, berating yourself to above the line emotions like confidence, knowing that you will find a way um, and believing in yourself and so on. Now, emotional resilience is your ability to deal with stress and uncertainty because that happens in, in the markets so that you have the confidence that you can deal with any challenging situations powerfully. And that's, again, what Linda is so strong in. She, when she, she had massive drawdowns in, in her trading career, but she also has the self-trust because she knows she has a great team around herself and she knows how to make it back. And that's what she does. She buckles down and makes it back. And that's actually uh, one of Linda's friends, Bob Buran. And I love this one. Right? So emotional resilience is the ability to recover from your own stupidity. And that's the mark of a good trader. And if you look at athletes, for example, the definition of an athlete who is um, strong and healthy and in good shape is how quickly they recover after a strong workout, after a heavy workout, after a competition. So traders who are able to cope with the challenges in trading, emotionally and financially, can easily bounce back from setbacks. Now, emotional health is, you know, um, when you are in that space, after you have worked through your um, emotional blockages, through a self-sabotaging behavior, you get to a stage where you become balanced, right? And once you're balanced, you have access to a whole range of emotions that are um, that we are naturally as human beings because emotions are ours like our legs are part of us. So to say, I don't want to have emotions, like saying, I don't want to have my legs. No, it's about knowing how to work with your emotions. I call it the emotional pendulum where you look at... Um, which, where, where are my emotions now? I'm feeling really I'm worried. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling the fear of missing out again. Um, like this trader who was going long far too early. If he had waited, you know, till, the, till Monday, he would have been right. You know, he wouldn't be uh, in a loss now. So, and then identifying that, okay, so I'm emotionally vulnerable now. I, I cannot trade. I need to get myself back into balance. Or am I too... Um, um, excited, you know, thinking, oh my God, there's this amazing setup. Oh my God, I'm going to make millions now. That is also not a good space to make profits from. And emotional fitness means building your emotional muscle with the well being approach, um, making sure that you stay emotionally strong so you can stay mentally strong. Now, 
the three strategies that I want to share with you are um, number one, know yourself. That is where everything starts. When you have emotional trading, learn to really understand who you are, what you're made of. And so I work a lot with the DISC profile, D-I-S-C. I'm an um, e-DISC trainer, so I've been um, um, certified in e-DISC. And so if you look at the D, I, S, and C energies, if you don't know what this is, Google it. I, I don't have the time to explain it here. If you look at the um, D, I, S, C energies, the D energy is, uh, that's your captain energy. They're usually focused on facts and figures. They know what to do. And they usually um, are not prone to letting their losses run but they're more prone to maybe not taking a setup. They may be more hesitant. Yeah, so if you know you're a high D, you also can identify what your challenges will be. If you're a high I, then high I's are driven by their feelings. They want to have adventure and variety, but also certainty. And so what they do is they would um, trade based on their feelings. They would say, um, ah, uh, it doesn't feel good to get out of this trade, out of this losing trade, and then they can't make themselves press that mouse button. So they have to practice not to react on their feelings and emotions, but to work with their logic and saying, okay, it doesn't matter what it feels like. I really need to press that mouse button now and get out of here because that feeling could get worse, right? Now, if you're a high C as a captain energy, they usually need three times convincer, as we call it, in order to make a decision. So if you if you were a high C and you wanted to go buy a car, you would um, maybe ask a friend who is a car nut. You would go to the dealership and you would um, look it up on the internet. And then you would know which car you want. Whereas the high I sees the car, loves the car, buys the car. The high S's, they're the time convincers um, who need usually a moment to make a decision. So they are the ones who find it extremely hard to cut losses and they are the ones who are prone to actually letting the losses run into the abyss because they are the ones who say, I want to buy a car. They go to the car dealership, they see a car, they go home, they think about it for a month and then they know they want the car or not. Now you can imagine the market like last week, that is not going to work. So if you are high S, you need to trade a little bit higher time frames. You are not very um, good at trading shorter term time frames because you will find it hard to make decisions on the shorter term uh, time frame. But however, if you love trading, scalping and so on, you can train yourself to make decisions quickly. Yeah. So you can maybe learn from the high C's. So just because it is your captain energy doesn't mean that you can't access the other behavioral patterns. It means that um, it's kind of like you say your arms are very strong, your biceps, but your legs are very weak, and then you need to start working on your legs. That's it, nothing else, right? So um, what you want to do is the critical moments exercise. Take a checklist and write down your most common unhelpful behaviors. So for example, I know that my um, biggest mistakes were um, um, I call it the superwoman, um, what's it called, the superwoman syndrome, where I have been doing really well on, so let's say the market has been going down, 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 down yesterday, and then a moment came when the market reversed. I would take one last short, even though it was not my trading strategy, and then the market reverses, and then I wouldn't get out because um, I didn't want to destroy my beautiful profit right so and then would let that loss run far too far that was something that i did repeatedly and once i was aware of it i was looking then what was the early morning signal what was the emotion that i felt just before that behavior and now i know myself so well i can already um, feel the <laughs> superwoman syndrome creep up and then I stop straight away. It could be maybe a whisper in your ear, um, or you know maybe you should take a rest now, and you don't listen to it. Yeah? So our emotions, our intuition, always tells us long before we start making mistakes. 
Um, so develop an early warning signals for the most common mistakes that you make. Then look at your emotional reactivity versus a stress response. What is stress? Stress is the fear that something will happen that we don't want to happen, or something will not happen that we do want to happen. So that you will never make it as a trader and live the lifestyle that an amazing trader has, or that um, you're afraid that you lose so much money and then you let your family down, right? So find out what is it that you're really afraid of and then face those fears and then do something to protect yourself from creating that. Because if you don't, if you ignore it, you will create exactly that thing that you're afraid of. That's Murphy's Law. Um, you know, as Templeton said, Sir John Templeton, he said, most traders lose most of their money in the attempt not losing money. And that is so true. I'm sure all of you have been through that. Now, um, when you look at what you're afraid of, let's say like um, driving a car, we would be afraid of having an accident. So we can put on our airbags. We can buy a really solid car. We can go to driver training. But there's many, many ways that you can protect yourself. And, you know, fear is a good thing because if we didn't have fear in driving a car, we most probably wouldn't put on all these extra measures, right? and wouldn't have insurance and so on. So look at trading the same way. Now, if we look at um, the understanding yourself, so that's the high level of self-awareness that you need to develop and understanding the link between your feelings and your trading behavior. And then you need to um, learn to understand the feelings that are going on. So that you don't keep repeating the same mistake over and over again. Yeah. Now, what I want to show you is how those feelings actually show up. I still have 10 minutes. That's great. Now, we all have heard, and I hope you have read the book from Carol Dweck, Mindset. And it is an amazing book, and I recommend reading everyone. And she talks about growth mindset and fixed mindset. And it's been around a lot on um, Twitter and everywhere, all those beautiful charts. But what does it really mean in trading? I try to do a mind map, but I'm not really good at um, technology. So I put it up on my whiteboard um, as part of a training and then put the screenshot. So please forgive me for the, um, yeah, for the, for the way it looks. Now, something happens, there's a trigger, right? So we could, for example, see a really big candle um, going, so, you know, Mark goes short, 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 we see a really big candle um, going up, and that is a trigger. We have an emotional reaction, we jump into the market because that was the fear of missing out. Yeah, so that could be a trigger. Um, a trigger could be something like what this um, guy experienced on Friday when he saw this monster dodgy candle on on the um, Dow, on the S, and then went long too early, taking that additional risk of the weekend and not considering that everything is possible and even the things that we don't want to happen are possible. So that's a trigger, right? And then we have an emotional reaction. What now happens is so our emotions, they're like um, the things that happen in our body. They're nothing but a chemical reaction. And so these chemical reactions, then we give them a meaning. So now it goes into our thinking brain, right? We give that a meaning. I'm going to miss out. Um, I need to pay my rent. I want to make my family proud, whatever it is. And now we have a feeling. So. We um, give you another example. We have a loss. We feel bad. We make that feeling mean, uh, sorry, we, we make this emotional reaction mean something. And now we feel like we're a disappointment. We will never make it and so on. So what is the fixed mindset is now we reflect on that meaning, uh, on that feeling. That feeling now becomes a mood and a temperament that stays with us. Oh, I'm such a loser. Um, I um, I will never be successful. Look at me. I've never been successful. I've never made it anywhere. I'm such a disappointment. That becomes a temperament. So we become really our lower, uh, our energy goes low. Um, we feel 
um, um, tired and exhausted, we lose our zest for life, it becomes our perspective on life, it becomes our perception of ourselves, that reinforces that feeling that we are not good enough, and then we repeat the same trading mistakes over and over and over again. And then we're stuck in a fruit loop. That's the fixed mindset. Now, once you understand what your um, pattern is in that area, so that's where the self-awareness comes in, now you can put a line in the sand. Because this area here is focusing on the past, being below the line. Now you want to start focusing on creating a new future. That is the growth mindset. So rather than um, keeping reflection on the, reflecting on the past and developing the mood, you want to say, all right, so, okay, I stuffed up. What do I need to change here? Um, what do I need to learn? Who can help me? Um, do I need to get coaching? Do I need to get another mentor? What is it that I can do in order to change my perspective and change my perception of the markets of myself? Because as you know by now, the markets are nothing but a reflection of the um, of our relationship with authority figures, uh, with our parents. So I remember when I started out, the market appeared intimidating and dominating to me, which was how I experienced my amazing brother when I was growing up. Right? Who would have thought? I didn't. I didn't realize it. I didn't understand. But once I understood. I then could go and um, resolve that within myself, right? It had nothing to do with my brother. It was my own, my own shit to deal with, as you say. And so the perception of myself, of the markets changed. My feelings about myself and about the markets changed. My beliefs about myself and the markets changed. Like, you know, I know there's a way. I will conquer this thing. I've made that mistake again, fair enough, but I made it a little bit less. Go me, yay me. And so rather than berating yourself for having um, made that loss again, say, wow, I actually got out of this losing trade. And, and, and tap yourself on the shoulder and say, go you, that's well done. Well done for pressing that mouse button rather than berating yourself for getting out too late. So now when you say, well, I made it, I pressed that mouse button, next time I can do it a little earlier. And the opposite as well, right? So if you tend to micromanage your trade trades, you can say, oh man, I really feel the urge to get out of this trade now, but my profit target hasn't been hit. I give it another 10 seconds and another 10 seconds. And know that those emotions, those fear emotions, that they will dissipate if you just allow them to be there rather than suppressing them. Say, all right, I feel this fear now and notice this fear. And that's okay. I can feel fear and stay in the trade anyway. Or I can feel really yucky, angry, annoyed, hurt, whatever it is about that loss and press that mouse button and get out anyway. Right? So it's not that you don't want to have those feelings anymore because that is not realistic. It's about having those feelings and do it anyway. Anyway, So what I see with traders who are too hard on themselves, they focus on the wrong, on the wrong thing. They're focused on wanting to resolve those emotions rather than focusing on having those emotions, but pressing that mouse button anyway. It's like when you want to get up early in the morning. No one likes getting up early in the morning. Oh, some weird people do, but I don't, right? But if I say I go to the gym at 5 o'clock, I do it anyway, even if I don't feel like it. If I say I'm going to have a cold shower every day, and you know, I tell you, every day I go to the shower and say, today I'm going to have a cold shower. I don't know what I do. I, every day I say it to myself. And then in the end, of course I do it. Because I know I'm going to feel bad if I don't. <laughs> it's really interesting. So um, I, what I do is, anyone who um, hasn't seen it, I have... Um, webinar on my YouTube channel called Cognitive Dominance. And this is really how I trained myself. So I'm naturally a high I. Um, so I'm naturally driven by emotions, which makes me a great trader because I'm extremely um, a great coach because I'm extremely kinesthetic. I'm, I'm um, really able to get into my trader's world and understand what's going on for them. 
but it makes me a not so good trader because I'm too driven by emotions, by feelings. So I had to train myself to keep my high eye in the area of coaching where it serves me, in the area of social engagements with my partners and families and, and, and other people, but to keep it out of my trading um, um, trading behavior. And what really helped me was I had a friend, she was working as an actress, and she taught me a few tricks on how to become a different persona. And so it was really interesting. She watched me trading one day, and this is how it all started. And she said, wow, you're like this completely different person when you're trading than when we talk. And I didn't know about it. I didn't realize it. And so then I thought, wow, this is really true. I can develop a different persona as a trader than I am in my um, trading in my social world. Yeah, so just because you maybe have naturally a behavior pattern that is not serving you, um, don't worry. It's, everything can be worked with and you can find your own strength. So for example, um, when you are extremely emotional, you also have great access to your intuition, which tr traders who are extremely cognitive, they don't have that. And I believe you become the best trader, you optimize your trading performance when you have access to your emotions, so to your intuition as well as to your logic and make them work um, as, as a team, right? And some people, they would even call the holy trinity, the body, mind, and spirit, um, where they say, that's where I perform best. I have access to my intuition, I have access to my feelings and access to my logical thinking. That's when I perform the best. So when you um, battle with your emotions, know that you're not alone. Um, know that we all make those mistakes and it's completely okay. Yeah. And so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask questions. Um, Anka gave me 55 minutes. So I'd just love to take a moment and um, share with you a course. I'm just going to start running actually this week. It's um, Advanced Skills for Emotional Mastery. And yes, it is only 299 Australian dollars because I always like to keep those courses affordable for everyone. And you know, I know there's coaches out there that charge 500 US dollars for a one hour session where they tell you what to do. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's not necessary to charge that much um, if, you, if you trade as well. You know, that's what we make in trading. Um, so yeah, I want to make keep it accessible for everyone. And so if you find that this could be useful for you, um, thanks David for, for the link, then um, have a look, um, email me if you have any questions and um, yeah, deal with your emotions. It's yeah, make them your best friend. And I want to share with you as well one thing, every successful trader has a dark past. And if you read Linda's book, you will see how um, she started off her career with a $70,000 US dollar loss in her first six months where she um, made a stupid trading decision out of inexperience. And then she had to work a few years to pay that off because 70,000 US dollars in 1980, that was, um, <laughs> that was a lot of money. And every losing trader has a bright future, but we have to work for it, unfortunately. It's not being delivered on a silver platter. And though no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new end. Um, I love Tony's swish pattern. Again, um, it's useful for certain um, behavioral patterns. So swish pattern is really useful for traders who have had a really big loss and have a grief about it. And they don't know how to get out of this grief. And so um, just, you know, feeding down on themselves. And we all know that if a trader experiences grief, most probably it's some sort of grief that they haven't dealt with in their um, personal life. I was working with a trader, really interesting. She She's quite a good trader. and She's been trading for a long time. She doesn't make millions, but she has a good income from trading. She's trading full time as a mother. And um, But she seemed to get to a certain level and then started to sabotage. And as we dug deeper, what came out was that um, she had an incident with her husband um, about 10 years ago where 
uh, he tragically passed away and she hasn't dealt with that emotion because you know as a mother of, of little kids she had just had to get on with it and get on with life and what happened unconsciously was that she couldn't allow herself to be as successful as she knows she could be because that would have meant unconsciously right she did, was not aware of that that would have meant being disloyal to her, her husband to her late husband and uh, which is bullshit right logically we know it's bullshit but you can see how powerful our unconscious emotions are so with her i did something similar to the swish pattern which is um, um something where they have to think of the event and then have to follow my uh, finger movements with their eyes and what we do and then she had to um she had to repeat sentences that i was giving her and so what we do with that is that emotion that is filed in the wrong place in the brain, we file it back in the um, long-term um, um, cabinet where it belongs, right? And, and we, we resolved her grief, we, I let her through her grief so she can come out of the grief and doesn't keep looping in it. You can imagine she didn't have a new relationship either, right? So, um, and she's beautiful, right? She deserves an amazing man in her life. So let's see how that goes. It was just um, a few weeks back, and um, I just I just love the swish pattern. Um, how intensive will this get? Um, so it is. It's actually everything on the website. It is um, eight webinars, um, four for the European session, four for the American session. Being in Australia, I I'm lucky. I can accommodate for both time zones pretty well. Um, so yeah, um, you will get um, homework to do. And there's Q and A's and coaching um, after the webinars. So it, I, I scheduled 30 minutes, but I stay as long as you need me to stay. Um, how would you manage the God complex? There are times when one is on an endless winning streak and thinks they're invincible. Ha! That's what I call my superwoman syndrome. <laughs> um, you call it God complex. So see, everybody has their own word for. And that's, you know, what I want to give you on the way. So it's really important that you give um, those words, um, those emotions, those patterns that you have of sabotaging a name. Um, yes, that will all be mentioned um, and covered in detail, Joe. Thank you. Um, so that you give your behavioral patterns um, a name. And you can say, oh, I feel God complex creeping up. So when you feel God complex creeping up, what I want to encourage you is go back through your trading um, 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 statistics and look for every time that happened. What happened just before you had your God complex trade loss? What did you say to yourself? What did you feel? Did something happen in your life? Did you have a fight with someone? Um, or, um, you know, so um, did you start, so for example, I know based on my statistics, I can have um, six or seven profitable trades in a row, and then I start losing my focus and I start making mistakes. So I know when I have six or seven trades, profitable trades, I now know superwoman syndrome is going to kick in. I need to be extremely careful, need to leave the, mark at the co computer, need to regroup, um, so I did that last night. I had an amazing session yesterday during the day, um, opening of the decks, and then I felt superwoman syndrome creeping up. I left, I went to the gym, um, I had to sleep, I woke up again at two in the morning and, and, and traded. So, because then I knew I'm back in my focus. My energy is round again. I'm solid again. Yeah, so I hope that was answering your question. I don't have much time to answer it, unfortunately, but that's what I would do. So you write down every time God complex happens or whatever your strategy is. Oh, thanks, Joe. I'm looking forward to working with you. Um, so Joe is signing up. Awesome. Um, so you look at what your um, behavioral mistake is. I um, um, let my loss run too far after having had a, losing, uh, a winning streak. What was the thought that you had just before you got into the trade or the thought that you had that prevented you from pressing that mouse button and get out of the trade? 
Again, trading mistakes are not the problem. The problem is not rectifying them straight away. What feeling was associated with it? And once you have this massive level of self-awareness, right, then you can feel the God complex creeping up well in advance. And that's when you can become, have a well-being approach rather than being reactive and trying to fix those stupid mistakes. Yeah, it's like saying, oh, I feel a little bit um, weak. I think a cold is coming up. Maybe not the best example at the moment with the coronavirus. I feel a cold coming up. I'm going to start taking lots of vitamin C, taking a rest, taking a sleep. My body is telling me something. I need to listen to my body. Yeah, so I hope that is useful. Um, thank you for mentioning uh, disc went through the training, reminded me how I can use it. Yes, use disc is just, I, I love it. It's so good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Randy Howell is amazing. I think he's a fellow Australian as well. Actually, I need to um, reach out to him. I think um, um, he's, he's a really good guy. Uh, my dad was a fraud. Yeah, wow. Wow, that is so hard. So once you realize that you also then need to work through um, whatever you realize. Realizing that was a fraud, that is really hard for someone. And then uh, there's a lot of forgiveness that <laughs> needs to be worked on and a lot of um, understanding the other person's world. So if your dad was a fraud, I wonder what happened in his life, right, with his parents. Because everything that we learn, unless we say stop that line in the sand, I'm going to change my tribal cycle. I'm going to create a better future for my kids by working on my shit and releasing that and becoming that new person that I truly am. And so um, we learn our behaviors, our programming and conditioning from our parents. And they learned it from their parents and they learned it from their parents. Now, they went through war. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have Tony Robbins. They didn't have NLP. We have that. We are the first really... Um, the first um, um, uh, um, generation who has access to that. So go and, and, and I would recommend you to work with a coach, something that you can't really resolve on your own uh, once you have this this um, idea of what happened. Reach out to Randy. Uh, happy to work with you as well, of course. Um, it doesn't matter, but yeah, resolve it. And, and you will see everyone in your family shifting and having a better life because of the work that you did. And this is what trading does for all of us, right? Um, not just changing ourselves and transforming ourselves. It's also the powerful impact it has on our families and friends and, and the world. So thank you, Anka, for all the work that you're doing. It's phenomenal um, for standing up for women, for standing up for making this world a better place, for sharing and training and doing your bit for this world. And I, I really love you and I can't wait. I'm, I'm going to visit Linda um, soon in Florida and I know you're close there, so we definitely have to catch up, okay? Um, so thank I'm you again. I'm looking forward to it, Mandy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So I made it in one hour. Awesome. Oh my God. I know. I know. And you know, I was just thinking, um, and I, I wanted to type to David, like next time we should allocate more time just because we're women and we're very chatty. Yes. And we know <laughs> so much, Anka. I mean, 20 years of experience. How do you fit that in one hour when you want to just Exactly. With that is me. Exactly. <laughs> so maybe for next time, we're going to have some mini master classes. That is awesome idea. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I'm speaking again on Thursday, and I would love to just really encourage people to ask questions and so that I can help and coach them. But there's so much information out there, but it's the coaching that really helps the transformation. Um, exactly. The, it's about how do you pick you know, what is, what you really need, you know, because, you yeah. know, coaching is so individual. Not everybody's at the same level. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So, so do you have a link where people can get a hold of you? Um, I think David posted it into the um, chat. Okay. That's the tradingpsychology.com.au. Okay. And that's also where my new course is. Um, yeah, I, I just yeah. put it in the 
chat again. Mm -hmm. Thanks, David. Appreciate mm -hmm. it so much. Thank you so much. And Mandy, have a wonderful day.